Good evening, everybody. And um, a very big thank you for being invited to be part of tonight's sex lectures. Um, OK, so yeah, I've got a private practice in London and in the West Midlands. And the focus of my work is working with individuals and couples. And I also work with people with physical disability, working as a sexual advocate and enabler for them. And when I was thinking about this talk tonight, I was wondering about how I was going to introduce myself. Um, obviously, name, what I do professionally. And then I considered the other things that I could say. Um, you know, I could talk about my, my gender identity. I could mention my, my sexual preference, maybe my favorite sexual practices, my relationship status, um, my relationship model. I was thinking about all of these, um, these labels and how very much that they're in our, in, our, in our collective at the moment. And I think that when I consider this, that right now we've, we've never had a, a time where so much of our sexual identity or our, sexual, uh, our sexuality is part of our declared identity. That there's, there's so much of that. And when we look at what's happening with you know, research into social policy, that we're now talking about sexual citizenship, where we're, and we're using that phrase to, to really um, bring to our attention the, the, the sexual rights of minority people or diverse groups of people. So there's a, there's, there's a lot going on, there's a lot of conversation going on at a, at a collective or what we might call a societal level around sexuality which I think is really interesting. I think it's fantastic that we are challenging some of the very long-held values and ideas that we've held around sexual practice and sexual behavior. I think it's exciting. I think it's also very challenging. But what really strikes me is that's all happening in the collective. But what I feel so passionate about is at a personal level. You know, right now, how are we equipped to really engage with our human sexuality in a way that works for us, in a way that truly works for us. So, and, and it doesn't matter what that is. You know, it could be that we're choosing to actually not be actively sexual right now. Or maybe our, our sexual expression is very much a personal thing with ourselves. Or maybe it's with one or more other people. And it, it, it's what, 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 what tools have we got to really, you know, make those informed and empowered choices about how we want to, to express our sexuality in our lives, because it is a very important part of being human. So what I want to share with you um, for the rest of, of tonight's talk is, it's a, a model that I've worked with for the last 17 years. Um, I've called it my sexual confidence model. And um, if I can just get my clicker going here. Oops. Oh. Okay, well, I don't, that's okay. Um, and I've used this, this model, I've used it with, pe I've worked with it with people who have either no sexual experience or very limited sexual experience. I've worked with it um, with, with, with people who um, are not having sexual interaction with others at this time, but they're just feeling incredibly lonely with their, their solo practice, um, solo sex practice. They're feeling, you know, even to the point of feeling a bit ashamed about it where it's just so, just too easy to click on the porn or pick up the vibrator. And also with, with people who are in relationship with other people, they are having sexual interaction. Um, but that can, even though they're having irregular sex, they can still feel very lonely in that place because they, you know, they, they, they're thinking that there's got to be more. I, I really like there to be more. Thank you. So the sexual confidence model, it has four, um, four quadrants to it. And the first one, is all about knowledge and it's absolutely essential that we have a really clear and factually correct understanding of what happens around sexuality um, because that that form is like the bedrock in order to um, for us it's about our pleasure it's about our sexual health and it's about our safety and um, you know the woeful lack of meaningful sex education in this country means that we have allowed the the media to, to become our sexual educator. And we've actually now got the idea of mediated intimacy, 
where the newspapers, where films, television, <laughs> pornography, it actually instructs us about how we, how we should be behaving, how we should be, um, you know, the whole area of sexual activity. And it, that leads to something that's called, that's called sexual perfectionism. So we've got this ideal that's sitting up there in our minds of, of, of appearance and of behaviours. So what happens when we, we, allow, we, allow the, um, when we don't have this, this good uh, foundation is that we, we start to um, have unrealistic expectations. Very unrealistic expectations, false assumptions, and we've, we, we need to cut through that because that's a really dangerous place. So many people that I work with, they're bringing these completely crazy ideas, and I always challenge them, where, where did you get that idea? And they got the idea from, 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 the, from the media. So what, what can we do about this area? Well, the thing we can do um, is that we can look at all of our ideas and our thoughts around our sexuality. And if we have any concern or any anxiety around ourselves as a sexual being, and that might be that we have the word should attached to it, or we are self-critical about ourselves. And if we are carrying any of those thoughts and ideas, it's really, it's really useful to, to identify them for ourselves. And then we need, to, we need to verify them with a reputable source. And there are some reputable sources on, on um, in, in the public domain, and there are also, you know, a lot of, of experienced practitioners. So we need to verify that, you know, this idea that, um, you know, I, I, I should be more lubricated if I'm, if I'm a really, you know, sexual woman, or, um, you, know, I really, uh, you know, I really should be able to uh, have a climax at the same time as my partner. All these crazy ideas, get them verified. And I'm going to be a little bit challenging here. Do you know one of the things that I think we can do that's so important is we can start to talk to our, to our friends, to people we trust. We can start to open up that conversation and start to have some honest talk about sex rather than it being all nudge, nudge, wink, wink or a little bit, um, a little bit boastful um, because that's how we can then start to develop this foundation of, of knowledge, sexual knowledge. And then the next aspect is our relationship with our body because the more comfortable and self-assured we are in our body, that does give us a much better chance of really enjoying whatever pleasure we're going to be exploring. Um, there are two distinct components to um, body relationship. One of them is what we notice when we see our body. So what do we notice when we see our, our naked body uh, in a mirror? You know, what's the reaction? What do our, where does our attention go? The second component is what do we feel about our body? And that one goes much, much deeper because that one, we carry that around all the time. We take that feeling into every interaction that we have. Any, so be it, be it an interaction in a professional environment or a personal environment. And that's the one that can really start to become um, an inhibiting factor for us in our life. So it is, it's what we see, it's what we feel. And we need to then just um, start to move to a place of, you know, let's, let's try and accept. So let's drop the comparison because that doesn't serve anyone. And if we can start to accept more about our body, then we, you know, hopefully we might have a chance of celebrating a little bit about it as well. So I, as a takeaway for, for this part of the model, I would say that, you know, the practice of when you look at yourself, when you, you, you either look at your body or you see your body in a mirror, have the practice of always finding something positive. Always, because our natural attention will go to the negative. And right now, as you're sitting here in this audience, just feel into something that you really like about your body, that you're proud of, that either how it looks, how it works. And just start anchoring that in yourself and take that into every meeting that you have, every interaction. The third component is personal pleasure. And this is where we actually build an understanding of how our body, and I was talking our whole body, which is a lot of um, previous speakers have mentioned that, how our whole body responds to different types of stimulation. The thing about this is it's, it's totally unique to each individual. It changes all the time. It ebbs and it flows. Um, it's, it's, not, it's not sort of um, a rigid, fixed, fixed thing. And the, the most significant way that we can discover personal pleasure is having a practice. 
So we talk about masturbation. And for, you know, let's be really honest here. Masturbation, if, if, we, if it's something that we, we have in our lives, it has often, it can have the purpose of it being, it being quick and it being a release. Um, and that, that's okay, that's not wrong. But what we can also have is, in addition to those quick releases that sometimes we need, we can have some time that's more about self-discovery, where it's a commitment to ourselves. We allow a bit more time, um, we, we, we discover more about our pleasure, and it is pleasure in, in, in the whole body. And then the final um, part of the model is sexual communication. And this, again, has been touched on previously. This is really about having the confidence to really speak our truth. And there's a, a sexologist, um, Bernard Apfelbaum, and he talked about sex being a black box. That what happens in that sexual interaction is very cloaked in secrecy. And he said that actually, when adults have a sexual interaction, it's actually it's quite a complex social interaction where we need to draw on a lot of our resources and our skills in order to communicate and navigate that, that space. Um, there's, there's, you know, it's in the moment when you're actually interacting intimately, you know, having, building the, the, the language and the confidence so that you can actually um, give feedback, you can ask for feedback, but there's also having the confidence to talk about your desires when you're, you're not in a, so, a, a sexual interaction, to actually, you know, risk talking about some of the things that you, you might never have experienced and you might want to in your lifetime. It's, it's breaking the silence and it's speaking the unspeakable. Because if you think about those times that, are, that do occur when things are feeling a little bit mundane or are just feeling that they're okay, how can we get the confidence to actually say that you want something to change? So thank you very much for your time and I hope there's something of use for there.